you may have read in the news about the education update in China. Now, a teacher is not allowed to teach outside the school anymore. In other words, he can't do any PJs. PJs means private jobs. He can only teach in the school, getting a miserably low salary, but getting paid a, a year's salary for six months' work, including summer and winter holidays in China. But that's not really enough. So a lot of teachers are now stummed, basically, for this extra income. They would have to do it very, very secretly. I really want to pick my nose. I'm sorry, but I'm going to do this live and I'm not going to edit it because I can. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thumbs down. Boop, boop, boop. So a lot of these institutions that do private education for kids to in English for a better understanding are all closing down. And one big one is Wall Street's Wall Street English, I do believe, that closed down a couple of months. They were struggling, but now it's all kaput, it's all gone. The reason why, I can understand the reason that they, the government wants it regulated, they want it controlled, because it is a sort of uncontrolled business, and it's a multi-billion dollar business, so they can get this, they can find this is extra money for them. You sometimes wonder if the CCP is broke. So they're trying to get all the money from, uh, not all, but a vast sum of money from Alibaba, example, Didi. Uh, the Uber company in China. And now they're moving on to education because they know it's a multi-billion dollar business. People, a lot of kids will have extra curriculum because the teachers, the English teachers in China cannot actually speak English. They can't have a conversation. They can do the grammar, the pronunciation, sort of, and also the vocabulary, sentence structure, etc, etc. So it's all academic, but actually communicating, they don't know how, and it's not included in the curriculum, it's in the curriculum in China, not included at all. So an 18 year old student yeah, would know how to possibly speak English, for example, the international language, which is needed for global communication, but can't speak it. And that's where these institutions come in. A lot of people would do the IELTS exam. I don't think this is going to be affected, but they would have to do this online with a IELTS teacher. No Chinese institution is going to do this. They won't be allowed, but it's not done in schools as well. And then they can go to college in Vancouver or in New York State or a university in the UK or even Hong Kong. It does need this IELTS. IELTS is the International English Teaching Language System, something like that, anyhow. And this is like in America, TOEFL or another one online called Duolingo. It's a requirement so you get an unconditional offer for the university. That has all gone, is going to be regulated. Why? Well, there's so many schools in China, uh, private schools, I mean, private institutions like night schools. And a lot of them are sort of like pretty, uh, I don't want to use the word shady, but they would say, get a business visa to China and we'll sort out your work visa. Everything should be done before that. And it's sort of like cash in hand, money under the table, etc. And that's why they're trying to regulate it. They're also trying to control the narrative. Now, a English teacher who comes from America or Canada or Australia or the United Kingdom may, they will be instructed not to say things about the government, anything sensitive, the country of Taiwan, the um, free Tibet, they can't talk about it. Some do. And also English teachers, just by one or two of them, have a bad reputation that they teach for six or seven hours, they do two or three hours work per day, then they get drunk all night and they come smelling to the, they come to the class smelling like a Jack Daniels distillery, which is not very good. And they get, and even they do private work and get charged, and they charge about 400 RMB per hour. That's like $50, $60 an hour, which is a fair chunk of money. Imagine doing that for four hours. Hey, you're done. That's like a, a basic American salary per, <laughs> per day. And you're only doing four hours of that. All gone.
Yeah. So there are some good sides, granted, but there are more bad sides. And you just think that the CCP, the government is just finding multi-billion dollar industries and sucking in the money with that. It's also related to the gaming, the online gaming. Kids under 18 can only play computer games for three hours per week. The average in China is 15 hours per week. Sorry, I'll rephrase that, 15, three hours on the weekdays, more on the weekends. But normally these kids, a lot of Ch Chinese kids would have 15 hours on the weekdays. Yes, that is too much, but it's related. That goes into the education system as well. So tough times ahead in China for education. It's something to keep an eye on. It's something to have a look at. Do I agree with it? Partly yes, but mostly no. There is a better way, but that's going to be far too complicated. This channel doesn't get many views, so I'm trying to expand it in a way of finding something different. And hopefully <laughs> you can find this channel and comment underneath. If you, um, I think that's about it. I've been waffling on long enough. Enjoy the rest of the day and I will look forward to another video on this channel soon. Do check out my other channel, the main channel, with the James Neil Cooper Show, usually about what's happening in China, granted, the Free Gorges Dam, granted, but a lot more, you could say, fun and varied topics included inside. That's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.